Hello and welcome to the town meeting program. It is Friday, the 8th of January, 2021. Nice to be able to say 2021 and not the other year which shall not be named. We're brought to you by Cordova Wireless Communications, your local cell phone and wireless data provider, which provides your local on-demand talk show. And today we had a request from Gay Wellman of Alzheimer's Resource of Alaska to talk about some upcoming events that they have, which are online events now, of course, because of COVID. But, you know, ironically, that has actually opened up extra opportunities for people to partake of their various seminars and educational opportunities. So she's going to tell us what's coming up in the near future, some pretty interesting topics having to do with uh, folks that have Alzheimer's or other types of dementia. And, And in some cases, the things that you learn can apply in in other areas with with other conditions as we'll hear as the show evolves so we hope that uh, you enjoy the show a reminder by the way that uh, our town meeting talk shows now go on our youtube channel as well after we're done on the air robbie gets them recorded and uploaded to youtube.com slash cordova tv so if you're catching the beginning of this show at a time when it's not convenient for you to spend the next half hour or so listening in, or later if you want to pass the show on to somebody else who doesn't even necessarily live in Cordova, then uh, point them to that YouTube channel and they can find the town meeting program for January the 8th. So with no further delay, we bring you Gay Wellman of Alzheimer's Resource of Alaska on today's edition of the Town Meeting Talk Show. Gay Wellman, nice to have you on with us again. It's always an interesting conversation. I hope the the first week of the new year is finding you well. Okay, thank you so much, JR, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Uh, It's it's always a a pleasure for me to talk to the folks there in Cordova, and I understand that there's some folks that are actually going to be contacting me to get some some support directly, which is great. So this is kind of a a good time for me to be online like this. Well, we are a wonderful town after all. Yes, we certainly um, are. And I very much miss going out there, being being able to come and visit. Yeah. Uh, So uh, what is it that you kind of want to get out there uh, these days? Okay. Well, we've got several things. Um, One is that the the webinar that's coming up, it's actually going to be on, on uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, from 1 to 2.30. It's the second part of a two-part, possibly even three-part series that we're doing on activities of daily living with wonderful tips and ideas for how best to help people um, learn how to handle these kinds of activities with their loved ones as the, as the dementia process uh, advances or moves forward. Uh, it's also good for folks that maybe you're just beginning the journey, you're just starting, your loved one still is able to do most of the things that we call activities of daily living. And those are basically five things. One being um, bathing, uh, another being grooming, dressing, undressing, that sort of activity, toileting, they call it there, eating, and that's the eating, the actual process of eating, not the preparing, but the eating process. And then mobility, being able to transfer, walk around, get up and down from, from uh, bed and stuff. And at some point during this dementia, if, if what your loved one has is a progressive dementia, at some point, all of these activities are going to be requiring more and more assistance. And the more you understand what works and what doesn't work, uh, the less battle there's going to be in these things. There's a wonderful video that we sometimes uh, show that's called Bathing Without Battles. And it's it's got some great scenes of what happens when you don't do it right and also what can happen when you do, that, that there are approaches that one can use that really help um, a person not feel like they're being attacked. Hmm. And of course, okay. none of us want to be attacked. No, I haven't. I haven't found it to be an awful lot of fun. How? What? What? What are the right. log- <laughs> the logistics of a webinar now uh, for folks that aren't familiar with communicating that way? Okay, great. What we're doing, you know, because of COVID, um, and actually prior to that, I've been doing it online for 
many years now. Uh, but right now, what our agency is using is the, the, the uh, platform called Zoom, oh, which yeah. I think many people have become familiar with during this day of these days of when we aren't supposed to get together in big groups. And it's been working really well. Um, of all of our education specialists, which is what what my title is, uh, that's four, five, six of us now, that uh, we're all doing it by Zoom. Prior to this COVID thing, uh, most of the others were doing it in person in mm. their in whatever community they were in. Uh, the other uh, education specialist that's doing it online for, for years is Amber Smith from Juno, who has been done, doing what we call the professional webinars. And the, those are targeting the folks that are Um, helping us in our assisted living homes and long-term care or the professionals that are coming into your home to do day services. However, it's always, those are always open to family caregivers as well. Anybody else is more than happy to come into those. They're basically the same presentations that we all do, but the target is different. So we'll be talking about it a little bit differently. Um, the Zoom process is a pretty easy process, actually. Uh, we now have developed, a, uh, we have online on our website, we have a, a calendar that call, is called Classes and Events Around the State. And we put out a list for all the things that we're doing in uh, any quarter. So there's a new one that's out now that you can find online. And I think I sent you one, JR. I think yeah. I sent you a copy of that. Yeah, I see that. Which lists the very various uh, webinars we do for families, uh, general ones that are called Caregiving 101. Uh, and they, they cover things like this activity of daily living that we'll be doing on Saturday. And then there's one that's going to be on Friday the 15th on communication tips. Uh, on the 19th, there's going to be overview of Alzheimer's. Uh, some of these are during the day on weekdays and some are evening ones. That one, the overview of Alzheimer's is actually going to be from 5.30 to 7 on yeah. the 19th. Uh, so and, then, and there's various other ones. Um, that so in terms doing, of being able um, to get the information kind of in a batch, then is is the uh, is it alzalaska.org is the website? Exactly. Yeah, if they go there, they should be able to find that relatively easily. And of course, if they can't, they can always give me a call or tell, let me know, and I can help them walk through it. And but what phone pretty, number are pretty, you using? I use the nine zero seven eight two two five six two zero. Okay. Good. That's well, a direct line. and you know, and it was interesting. I remember you saying the last time we chatted that while the you know dealing with COVID and and uh, having to do things online was new and you know maybe had its growing pains, that actually it sort of opened things up in a way. You find that it it's potentially a way to reach more people than you might otherwise. Absolutely, absolutely. And the other thing that's really exciting for me is that, that there's several programs that I was never able to do. I didn't, you know, I didn't have the time or the ability to do them, but there's something called Memory Cafe, which one of our uh, education specialists runs, and she's doing that online, and there's a great deal of fun with that. That's something that you can participate in with your loved one, and they just do fun things. There's music, there's fun games, there's uh, different kinds of things that they do in that, and it's always a, a good time, and that happens uh, on Thursday. Well, they'll find the schedule on that. Art Links is another one that I couldn't do, and again, another one of our specialists uh, is really good with art, and she does a beautiful job of helping folks, uh, and that's something that long-term care facilities or assisted living homes can look up, hook up with. A lot of her people are coming to us from that way, and that, so that they have it online, you know, they can show it, and, and the participants can uh, participate in that, mm-hmm. and she gives them a list ahead of time of what what supplies they're going to need, that sort of thing, and what the topic's going to be. Okay. Uh, and that's like once once a month as well. Um, actually, it's twice a month. Excuse me. All right. Uh, so again... Brain uh, games, oh, go ahead. The same kind of thing. Yeah. So these are the activities. And the Voices of Alaska Frontier. Any of you who'd like to sing, uh, again, these are ones that were being done in person prior to COVID, and now they're being offered online. Mm. And I don't see those stopping even when we start to be able to do them in person again. It's been so well received because right. anybody who has access to the internet, and I know that for some folks in um, rural areas, they don't have good internet uh, connection. So what you want to do is go to your agency, whoever's helping you, yeah. and they can you know can do it as a group if you can, you know, yeah. with distancing and the masks and all that. So 
Um, so, again, there's a selection of different things. We also have on this Colossus and Events, you can see the wide range of different kinds of support groups that are being offered, not just by us, but like some of the other states, some of the other agencies have, have uh, support groups. All right. And those of you that are dealing with someone with dementia, one of the big important things for you is to get support. Yeah. This is not something you can do by yourself. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, you just can't. Oh, it's it's. Uh, I mean, obviously you can, but you're going to put yourself under a great deal of stress if you try to. And why not get support? Why not get help? Why not talk to some of us that have been doing this education for a while? Because there are skills that you can develop All that right. will help you through this. I can't emphasize that enough. Well, and again, your your phone number there, 822-5620. Uh, you've, you've always been very open about being glad to hear from folks. Okay. And uh, uh, so this uh, webinar, again, uh, the Activities of Daily Living, what was the time for that? That's from 1 to 2.30 on Saturday. Okay, the and 9th. And they can register online very easily. Uh, it, actually, I won't be doing it, but I'll be there, obviously. But Linda Shepard, who's another specialist of ours, is going to be doing the presentation, and she does a beautiful job. Okay. Last month, it, we targeted bathing. This month, it'll be grooming, dressing, and then as far as we can get into the toileting and eating and mobility. If right. we don't finish up, we'll do another one, because this is such an important piece. Yeah. And as I said, your loved one doesn't need to... You don't have to be to the point where you're doing, you're helping them with everything, because there's things you can do right now, in the beginning stages that will make a big difference. If you start learning what you need, how how do you decide what kind of support does your loved one need? Yeah. And that's part of what we're looking at is helping you to determine how much help, because you can give too much help. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's right. not a good thing. You know, trying to do it all by, you know, trying to do it for them. You don't want to do that. We all need to have some um, some say in what's happening for us. So it, this is really a partnership we're talking about, not a caregiving, but a partnership, car, care partnering. Okay. So Saturday, January 9th, uh, again, details on how to register and participate at alzalaska.org. If uh, Internet is not the best option for you, the phone number 822 822- Five six two zero. We're talking with uh, Gay Wellman of Alzheimer's Resource of Alaska, and you said something to me before we got started about uh, getting a new grant or mini grant. What was that about? Okay, the mini grant. This is uh, something we've actually had for a long time, and and uh, oh. I can send you more information about that, um, Jr. If you want, because it's a really great program. It's just one that we're managing. Our agency manages for the state. Uh, we get a bucket of money that we can distribute to uh, families that have someone who has a, a certified dementia of some sort. They have to have a diagnosis of dementia of some sort. Right. doesn't have to be Alzheimer's, whatever it is. They can be eligible with that. They can be eligible for up to $2,500 a year. So each year you can be eligible for $25 help in getting supplies or equipment or uh, just anything, pretty much anything that helps you that you can show helps you keep your loved one at home or helps them wherever they are. And what would the so, application process be like, or is there one? How does it work for people to participate? It's very, very simple. It's a one-pager. Uh, you just, the main thing is that you have the diagnosis, that you yeah. have documentation of a diagnosis. And then it's just a one-pager that you uh, decide what you want, and you have to do the research to say where you want it to get it from, whatever it is, who yeah. the supplier is going to be. And then you put that down, and then you have just a couple sentences that say why this is going to be important to you. Yeah. Like one of the ones that we used up here in Cunning Lake was somebody needed wood, hmm. and they could, didn't have the funds to get the wood and so to heat their home. And so they found a, a, a supplier of wood and put the name down and contact information and said why this was going to be helpful, obviously, to keep their house warm. You yeah, know? yeah. So, uh, and and that was it. And then send the application in. There's a process that it goes through. There's a committee that looks at it and decides whether it's valid or not. And and then you get your money. Okay. You don't have to use the whole twenty five hundred, but why not use it? You know? yeah. And you can use it for various different things. People have gotten things like uh, walk in tubs or adjust it there. Uh, put in a, a shower, walk in showers, um, great uh, generators. Uh, washing machines, dryers, 
uh, you name it, beds, mm-hmm. uh, and then smaller things, supplies, you know, the, the daily supplies that they may need, whether they're using uh, Depends or any of those sorts of things that they sure. can't get any other way. Now, if you have another resource for it, fine, go, go for that. But this is like a backup for that. And that same phone number if people want to know more about it? Absolutely. And I can send you information if you've got a way of putting that on, on the phone. I can send you the, the uh, information about the application and things. But I'm happy to do that. If you have email, it's easy to send that out. Yeah. So, All definitely right. Definitely calling. Well, and you can, actually call, you can actually find that information on our website as well. It's yeah, I was going to ask about that. Mini Grant, yeah. and again, alzalaska.org. You can, you can exactly. somehow surf that up. It's pretty obvious. Right. It's pretty obvious. It comes up right away. You may have to figure out how to, where to find things, but, but it's not a, it's a, it's a pretty good, uh, website. Okay. It's pretty, uh, friendly. Okay. And then, uh, looking uh, ahead a little bit, um, you mentioned you've got a, a workshop in February that's a little more on the sensitive side. So what's, what's coming yeah. up then? What's coming up is a website. It's, it's actually a professional webinar, but I've done them for, for families as well. It's called Intimacy, Sexuality, and Dementia. This is one of those areas that we're finding more and more people are saying, you know what, we need help with this. Mm. It's folks that are partners, you know, they're, they're intimate partnerships. Um, dementia plays havoc with that, whether their loved one is in an assisted living home or whether they're living at home. And so partners really caregivers who are partners, who have intimate partners, really need some additional support. We have, um, I've just started a, a couple months ago, I started a, a support group for partners specifically, and that was a request that we had from some folks saying, hey, you know, these other support groups are fine, but, you know, there's some of these issues we need to talk about with others that are trying to work out how to deal with their husband or wife or whoever their partner is. And there's a whole lot of issues that come up in assisted living homes and, and uh, long-term care facilities that really need, uh, facilities need help with this. It's not something we talk about very easily. You know, how many of us talk about sex in front of the table, you know, at the dinner table? Not too many. Uh, one of the things that we've learned is that it's not just sexuality that we're talking about. There's at least five different types of intimacy. And that's one of the things that we talk about in this webinar that all of us need to become aware of. Um, you know, we have we have uh, intellectual intimacy needs. We have uh, emotional intimacy needs. We have spiritual intimacy needs. We have social intimacy needs, as well as the physical or sexual, you sure. know, whatever level you're talking about. So it's really important as caregivers that we become aware of how are we getting those particular kinds of needs met? Some of us, it's our partner does it all. That's who we've depended on with our partner. Most of us don't have a partner that's quite that good. Mm. <laughs> they can fill all those needs, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I've had three different husbands, and each one of them is wonderful, was was good at their at their level, whatever. And, and I'm just saying that that uh, you know. But I had to reach out for other people to help me with some of these things. Sure. You know, I needed people that I could talk to, maybe. You know, I'm just saying that as an example. You know, yeah. that maybe I had people. So anyway, that's one of the things we talk about in this in this webinar. Uh, we'll also be looking at how do we help folks deal with the challenges that come up. And how does a, a daughter deal with a hu- father who has dementia, who's now thinking you are his wife? Oops. How do, yeah. how do we deal with a, a caregiver in a facility who, when she's trying to help a woman or a man, for that matter, uh, you know, a man or a woman, for that matter, but she's trying to help them bathe, and they take it as a message that you're ready to have more than that. Yeah. How do we help somebody? You know, the man you're helping them bathe, and they reach for your boobs. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's, it's not uncommon at all. And so giving caregivers some heads up of how to help that person through that without being punitive, without being horrified. And that means we have to, as caregivers, we have to get in touch with our feelings. What's our feeling about subsex of uh, homosexuality? That's a big issue. Yeah. In caregiving places. And who knows what's going to come out of, you know, maybe, maybe your mother has always been, you know, heterosexual in her interactions. Right. But who's to say what's going to get uncovered in this process of dementia? We talk about how 
a, a person who's never sworn in their adult life, but suddenly, you know, it seems like they suddenly start swearing like troopers. Mm. You hear that a lot. Same thing applies to this issue of our, our sexual needs. And if in the process of my developing my dementia, this is one of the things I'm becoming aware of, the avenues for getting some of these intimacy need, other intimacy needs is cut off from me. I can no longer do the intellectual. I can no longer be social with people. I can no longer follow my spiritual gu- guiders. My brain is not allowing me to do that anymore. Um, my emotional needs aren't being met other ways because my brain's not allowing me. What's left for me is that basic, you, you know, that, that animal nature, so to sure. speak. Sure, no, that that, right, at the, right at the base of the pyramid there, yeah, obviously. Exactly, exactly. and so that's what's left. Yeah. And we all need support. We all need connection. We all need, don't care who you are. I don't know what your brain capacity is. We all need human connection or connection with something in our universe. That's why pets are so valuable. Mm. And that's why warm, fuzzy things later on are so valuable. Now, you say that this webinar itself uh, is, if, if, uh, is it open to the general public, or is it, is it really just designed for, for you know, professional providers? It's, it's designed for professional providers, but this, uh, this one particular one, is the, the way I'm presenting it is going to be, it's the way it's listed, is it's for a professional webinar. It's a professional webinar. It's just going to be an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're not going to get into great details, but, but we're hoping that this will allow us to begin the conversation and that we'll be doing more of this. I have done the same kind of presentation for families. And there's just a different way of you, a way you present it. But it's basically the same information, the same encouragement to look at our issues. Okay, Caregivers, so that's... Whether, whoever oh. they are. So that's Need coming out. Looking at these issues for themselves. That's that's coming out in uh, in February. Uh, I assume details are also available on the website or via phone call, like yeah, all these it, other it's things. Yeah, listed in a separate little box that is called professional webinars, and this is the one that's going to be on intimacy, sexuality. It's going to be on February 16, from 12 to 1. And again, if this is something you're interested in, please let me know. I am talking about starting another support group. For partners, uh, and I haven't decided on a date or time yet. It's probably going to be during a weekday, during the week, during the daylight, daytime. Yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, the one I have right now is on Saturdays, and it's pretty well full. So I'm starting another one. I have four or five people have already signed up for that. I'd like a few more. But if that's something you're interested in, let me know. Or if you're just interested in in getting into further conversation about this. I just did a, a talk on the radio. I had a delightful time sharing with the, the young man. It's a topic we talk about. There's no right or wrong. There are things that work better. There are some guidelines. But uh, each of us needs to be making some choices around this and not be avoiding it. It's a conversation we need to have. Yeah, obviously. Um, you know, or, or then right. you're pretty well guaranteed to just have chaos as a as a result exactly. preparation right. is uh you know i guess right. that would be another question if if uh people are in a situation where that is not a huge challenge right now but is likely to become right. so in a few in the future is it worth sitting in on something like this to begin absolutely. to get some preparation this is with any of these yeah absolutely you know, it's it's worth getting some ideas around this because this is not something that's, you know, you may not have to deal with it. It may be fine. The other thing about dementia is that for some people, they become, because of whatever's going on in their brain, the, the chemical, whatever's happening, um, they become hypersexual or they become the other way. Right. Where they may have been warm and cuddly and loving and everything else, and now they don't want to be touched. Mm. And that can be just as hard for a, a, a loved one to deal with. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you, and again, if they are in a home, they may not who, know who you are when you come to visit. And right. they're going to get connected with people in that home. Right. You know, the, so how uh, do you deal with that? That multi-part, that multi-part um, program on, on HBO, actually, that years ago dealt with, with that subject where sometimes in facilities they would end up uh, – developing relationships with other people in the facility and, and forgetting who their, sure. their actual partner or their actual family 
were. So uh, exactly. Yeah, that's a that's, lot of the movies that we see that we you know you can find different movies. There's one from a long time ago. I think it's called Being There or something like that. Uh, it was it was several years ago. You can find still that that talks about that where the woman decides she gets she puts herself in a home and then she forgets who her husband is. Yeah. <laughs> And that doesn't happen overnight, and it's not necessarily going to happen for you, but it possibly, probably will, especially if you're not there all the time. And and so that's something that agencies need to be working with. How are they going to deal with when you when they see, oh, here's a husband who's making, you know, who's getting connected, or a wife who's getting connected with another person, and and it can be a other, you know, a woman with a woman. Sure. And how are you going to deal with that? You walk in, you know, you come and visit, and here your your father is, who was married to your mom, who may or may not still be alive, and he's, you know, he's in a, a holding hands with, cuddling with another man. Right. And that can happen. Sure. And it's all, and you so know, again, preparation, agency, pre- yeah. preparation uh, goes a long way toward... Hopefully, uh, you know, I mean, the more prepared you are, you reduce your chances for being shocked by these things. It doesn't necessarily make them easier to deal with, but it can take the surprise element out of it. Exactly. And it can give you some tools for how are you going to get through this for yourself? Because our concern, as much as anything, my concern anyway, and many of us, is, is to help you as the care partner, whether you're the professional care partner or whether you're a family care partner. Okay. To move through this journey because this is not an easy journey. No, things are changing. Change yeah, you... happens anyway for all of us. You know, as we get older, but dementia has another whole piece to that. And there's ways of helping you get the right attitudes and get prepared so that it's not such a shock, and you can begin enjoying life again. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the end. It doesn't have to be. You may you're going to move through a period where it's going to feel like that. But we can help you get through that and give you some tips on how to make it so you can begin finding the joy. Well, it's certainly, you know, it, it's one of the things that's always amazing about talking with you is that it uh, your your passion for this subject never seems to wane. Ha, has it been, uh, what's it been like trying to navigate the, the, the pandemic? Uh, I mean, we talked about how maybe it's, it's opened up some webinar opportunities, but, but just Overall, uh, what kind of a year was 2020 for you? Okay, it's been it's been a tough one. Not so much for me as it uh, in some ways it has been for me, but but for other people, especially folks who are dealing with this. One of the things that's happened is that they haven't been able to get care, uh, you know, assistance in caregiving. So they haven't had people coming into their home to give them respite, right? Or to help them even with housework. Now that's beginning to open up a little bit, but certainly in the beginning, one of the things we're seeing and one of the things that our agency actually is beginning to take a look at and beginning to recognize this is a hole we've had is that we have not been providing enough mental health support. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a list of good counselors. Our uh, support, now my background is, it is in psychiatric nursing, so I've been able to do some of that on my own, but for the folks that I'm in touch with, but these, we, we need to have that. We need to give support for our families. And right now with this COVID, especially as it's wearing, you know, it's been wearing on us for such a long time. I have several caregivers who are at their wit's end yeah, and they desperately need more support than we're able to provide. And so the more people that understand what's going on and it's for all of us, you know, most of us are experiencing that, right? Sure. And so being able to reach out to get support, whether it's from a good friend or whether it's from a, a, a spiritual guide or whoever it is, we need to be supporting each other. And we've also been on top of the COVID. We've had all this hatred and division going on in our country. Yeah. That's not helping at all. No, I don't imagine. I mean, it's certainly, I don't care who, it's what it's side you're on if contributed, a side had. contributed to the weirdness of the year. Uh, yeah. Exactly. There's, there's no question there. Oof. So pow, pow, pow. You know, every time you turn around, there's something else that's going on. It's like, whoa, is it ever going to stop? I just, uh, I learned to not predict uh, anything at all. I don't know, actually, if I'm ever going to bother trying to predict anything again after, uh, <laughs> after 2020. No, and that's one of, right. 
<laughs> that's one of the things. In some ways, it's a it can be seen as a as a gift. You know, when things get really bad, like they've been this year, really horrible. What it brings out is either the best in human nature or the worst. Yeah. And I like to be on the side of the best myself. I don't know about you. So I'm reaching for whatever I can to stay positive, to stay. And I'm not talking about Pollyanna type positivity. Yeah. But what do we need to do? Uh, what do I need to do as a human being to keep my humanity, that part of my, my humanity that's important to me, yeah. which is love? Sure. How do I, how do I combat all that other energy that's coming around. And this experience with dementia gives us the tools for doing that. Whether it's with your loved one who has dementia or whether it's with someone else who's going off on some trip that they don't need to be going on. Mm -hmm. That these tools give you the way to keep yourself from being drawn into that negativity. Well, as we uh, kind of wind down to the the back end of our time slot here, uh, you know, what would you kind of like to leave us with? We talked about the webinar. We talked about the mini grant opportunity, this intimacy workshop in February. Uh, anybody, by the way, that is not uh, hearing the show when it's on the radio, this will, of course, be on our YouTube channel as well, youtube.com slash Cordova TV. But uh, what what is, is is there anything else uh, kind of here at the end that's on your mind? My my main thing is reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. Don't try to do this by yourself. Whether you're a, whether you're working in a facility or whether you're working, you know, whether you're at home trying to do this. And if you're a friend, give us a call. You may not be doing the direct care, but what you can offer is critical. And the more knowledge you have about what our families are going through, what the person with dementia is going through, what it is, the more information you have, the more education you have, the better support you're going to be able to provide. And again, as I've said, not just for the families that have dementia, but all of our family, everyone sure. is feeling the pinch, so to speak. Yeah. So one more time then, uh, the, the contact information, best ways for people to reach out to you? Yeah, it's 907-822- Five six two zero. The other way is through my email, which is g wellman at alzalaska dot org. And that's the same uh, address for the website alzalaska dot org. Yes, that's a, that's the same pos- uh, ending part. So, but right. it would be just my first name, my first initial, my first name G for gay. Yeah. And then wellman, my last name w e l l n a n at alzalaska.org. And it sounds like that's a pretty feature-rich website, so uh, people are welcome to to visit that. And, and, you know, you make it sound like, um, you know, that poking around on there a little bit, you might learn some, you might actually learn some skills or get some ideas for dealing with things beyond just uh, a situation involving dementia, which is, which is an interesting... Absolutely. Tangent. Absolutely. You know, brain changes, brain changes, brain changes. I don't care if it's coming because of the distress of what we're going through emotionally with this with this COVID and with the whole mess that's going on politically in our country, uh, or whether it's because uh, a person is alcohol is an alcoholic or connected to drugs, whether it's temporary or you know, it doesn't matter. Brain changes, brain changes, brain change. Yeah. It can be a stroke. It can be anything that's causing our brain to change. Working too much on on internet, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> playing the stupid games, getting addicted to things. Okay, yeah. this is going to help <laughs> you deal with someone who's addicted to feelings. Sure, you know, maybe you have someone in your life who who likes to stay demented. I'm not saying that's purposeful, but who's connect, who's who's depressed, sure, all the time. This can help you with that. Hmm. Very interesting thought. Number of different challenging uh-huh. situations that aren't necessarily just related to Alzheimer's or other dementias, That's and right. the coping strategies uh, may have have broader appeal. So, A L. What was it? One more time. Oh, the the website is alzalaska dot org. Now, you're not going to necessarily find that kind of information on that site, but if you give me a contact, mine is G A W G G A G. Excuse me, I'm getting caught here. Uh-huh. G Wellman at alzalaska.org. Okay. 
Okay, that's my that's my inner that's my um, your email. My email. Yeah. And well, I'll be quick at answering those if I'm around. It's very uh, informative, as always, Gay. And uh, we're talking about the possibility of maybe chatting monthly. We'll see how that evolves. Uh, no, in, the mean, great. in the meantime, uh, thank you for reaching out to us. Please feel free to do so. Again, stay on the line, by the way. But for the purposes of the program, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll say farewell. And I'm glad you could join us. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. As I said, I always enjoy it. Gay Wellman with Alzheimer's Resource of Alaska, always a delightful guest, very knowledgeable here on the town meeting program, brought to you by Cordova Wireless Communications, which not only provides those valuable services over cell phones with the wireless data and the talking and all of that, but also keeps the money right here in town. So those dollars that you spend aren't being shipped out to Valdez or Anchorage or who knows where else. Real important in these pandemic times, especially. If you ever have a topic you'd like covered on this show, a guest you'd like us to interview, anything like that, just let us know. For now, we will make up all missed programming in the 10 a.m. hour and wish you a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in to Town Meeting.